Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Anokin Cool Fire 4 Plus. Anokin sent me this kit for review. This is the kit that comes with the iSub G tank along with the mod, but they also sent me a, another tank which is their Apex tank and this is the one we're going to try out today and I put some links below one is from the My Vapor store $64.50 for the kit that comes with the Apex tank tank in it and then I also have a link Vapor DNA which is also $64.99 that is identical to this that has the I sub G tank in it so but what I want to do, because I think the uh, the Apex tank is an upgrade to the other I-Sub-G tank where they added some um, airflow differences and they also made this easier to fill with this really neat top fill system. So I think this is the better tank, or at least the tank with more features. So that's the, that's the one I want to try. And um, the other thing is that the coil in here, you know, it's a normal... A co organic cotton type of coil that goes from 30 to 20 to 35 watts but I want to try out this Clapton um, bottom vertical coil head and this runs about 30 to 70 watts so I want to do that one now they also came uh, or sent me this nickel coil head we're not going to be using that today because the school fire 4 doesn't do temperature control however if you just end up buying the tank, they do provide you the ability to go with temperature control. So we're looking at the plus. What does that plus mean? It means that it is 30 watts stronger than the version that doesn't have the word plus after it. Plus there are some differences in the way it looks too. So this is an upgrade to their original Cool Fire 4. Go ahead and open this up. They sent me a black one, but it also comes in other colors. You could get this also in silver, blue, and red. Now, technically, this is an unboxing and a first impression, not technically a review. So it's you know it's in the box here. I haven't really um, vaped with it. I've had it out and played with it a little bit, but I haven't really done anything else. So here's the mod. I love the texture on this black one. You can see it's sort of like a brushed finish. There's some battery venting right there. And by the way, the battery doesn't come out of this. The battery is built in. Um, I like that. So this is a 3,300 milliamp hour battery built in, and it's a very simple mod to use. This is what I would consider a next step from like an Ego style or the uh, Endura T800 by Anokin. When you're ready to move up to a more boxier type of mod with more power, this is the next logical step. But it doesn't have the complexities and the learning curve of temperature control. This does not do temperature control. Now we'll go ahead and uh, turn this on and it says three clicks so we do three clicks and you can see how it says Anokin. Uh, really simple you have your scroll controls here to go up and down. You can see when it starts blinking um, then you could go ahead and move it up and down so when you first hit it it does nothing. You've got to press and hold one of these scroll buttons the display starts blinking and then you could go ahead and start moving. See? see how it's not doing anything you gotta like press and hold it so it's sort of like a, a built-in kind of lock feature right there to prevent you from changing this by accident you also have the battery indicator your voltage indicator and your ohm reading of your uh, whatever device you have on top here again this is your fire button here now your fire button there's a light that will light up around here when you're charging it it's the tri-color battery level indicator so depending if it's uh, blue yellow red you'll know where your battery is as far as charge is concerned you also have a micro USB right there on the bottom that's where you're gonna plug in in the charge now here's the uh, that G tank which we're not going to be reviewing today that's the one that came with this particular kit. I want to I want to try out their newer stuff. So let's see. Underneath here, you got more goodies. If I can get this open, there we go. So what we have under here is a uh, USB cable for charging. I don't see a charger in here. I also see a manual, and this looks like a manual for the um, tank. And there's also I'm gonna just have to. <laughs> get out looks like a card that, oh zappers 
another word for stickers. Alright, so that's everything that you get in the kit. So let's go ahead and just put all this away. This is already charged. I did have it on, made sure it was charged up. It came pretty much all the way charged up. Now, what I want to do is get the tank. As I said, I wanted to try it out with the Apex tank right there. And I want to also try it out with the Clapton bottom vertical coil that they make available. So we'll go ahead and pop this tank out. Right there, you can see it comes with some extra head. It comes with some extra head. That was real good English. It comes with a 20 to 35, looks like, uh, head right there. It comes with a, another drip tip. Feels like, um, I'm not sure if this is glass or acrylic. It's always hard to tell. When I click it in my teeth, it feels like it is glass, some sort of Pyrex. Alright, so we'll put that aside real quick. And we'll take a look at this tank. This tank, let me get this out. <laughs> this tank looks pretty incredible. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. So what we have here is a top filled tank. So I guess what you do is you just sort of turn this top ring right here like that there we go see how that works so you have a top ring you turn it it opens up two holes so I guess while you're dripping your your juice down one hole the air could be escaping out of the other hole pretty neat and when you're all done you just sort of close it up so very very easy to fill dice design um, your airflow is this ring underneath right here so we can um, turn this ring right there. You can see how that closes. It has two slots, one on each side. They both open and close equally as you turn it. See that? Um, and it looks, and you, ha and you know, this is your glass to see your liquid. Now, if you notice, when I'm holding it like this, you can see the there's an outer glass and an inner glass. This is Pyrex glass, by the way. So it looks like the air is going down between these two pieces uh, of glass. So your air is coming down and, and coming up here, and your juices on the inner tank is, or inner, in the inner glass, um, is going down and coming up also. So that's sort of how it's, I guess, how it separates everything. Let's see, we have a removable 510 drip tip, right? Yep. All right, so well, that's interesting. All right, so the uh, drip tip is an insulated type, so you have like uh, probably a Delrin tight inside there with two o-rings and then you have the metal on the outside this is actually better than a solid metal piece only because it doesn't transmit the heat as um, easily to your lips which uh, the tip should be in now to remove the atomizer or to change the atomizer which is what we're going to do here you unscrew the bottom and you just pluck it out and then you put the new one in now this is kind of neat because you could have all the juice still in there and you can change your head you don't have to get juice all over the place now this is another 20 to 35 watt uh, watt atomizer here and what I want to do is set this one aside and we're gonna try out this Clapton guy Clapton isn't Clapton a, a singer? no he's a guitarist, a famous guitarist <laughs> All right, all right. Let's uh, get this guy out, and you know I can see a little bit of a difference here in the coils. Um, with the the one that came with it, the the coils going across where the this one, the Clapton one, and it's actually vertical. I guess that's why you say BVC. I'm such a dummy. All right, so you got organic cotton. So all you do is just pop that guy in there and close up. Now before they do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab some juice because it's always good to sort of pre-wet your atomizer. Um, other spe uh, specifications really quick. This is a 22 millimeter tank. It is uh, has a capacity of 3 milliliters. Whereas the one that came with it, the I sub G the other one that we're not reviewing today actually has a bigger capacity that has a 4.5 so there's an advantage to the other one that came with the uh... that's the i sub g 
but um, I want to do the Apex because it just has more things to play with. Alright, so, juice today. We're going to do Halo, Kringle's Curse, because it's a peppermint and we're approaching the holidays. We want to do some sort of holiday tasting flavor. Um, Halo, uh, I went ahead and put a link below for Halo. Halo has a c couple of neat things that I like about them. They're uh, pharmaceutical grade, um, pro you know, pe what do you call it, ingredients in their juices. So it's extremely safe. It's made in a lab. That's uh, th And they've been around f f since the beginning of vaping in the U.S. And here's the important thing because the big news all you know all over the internet where a lot of vapors are shooting themselves in the foot because they're making a big deal about it um it may be a big deal maybe not <laughs> is that this has what's the word i'm looking for this does not have diacetyl diacetyl all right i'm having trouble getting the childproof cap off so uh while i'm trying to get this open let's do a short uh, talk about diacetyl. Diacetyl is uh, a natural occurring um, type of thing that you can find in, in like coffee. You know, so also it, there's artificial versions of it. And, and the big thing is that this chemical, if you breathe it in, it sort of can gunk up your lungs and create issues. At least there is preliminary evidence but it's not um, it's not clear at all and it may not be the cause because uh, cigarettes have a hundred times more diacetyl than vaping and I, I don't see anybody who's smoking um, end up with what they call popcorn lungs and popcorn lungs the, they got that word because which is the disease that you get for from diacetyl supposedly is because there were like six or seven people that came down with popcorn lung disease from breathing in diacetyl. If you want to know the, the whole story, just go on the internet and um, Google diacetyl or popcorn lung or, or something like that. But the neat thing about Halo is that they have their juice has been audited and doesn't have diacetyl in it. And other major companies are all making sure that they get their, you know, they use ingredients that like butter flavoring and custards tend to sometimes have this diacetyl in it. So they'll switch their formula to get rid of that. So we don't have a problem. Uh, I know uh, Johnson Crank, which is another one of my favorites, is changing their formulas right now for the ones that had it. All right. So anyway, um, Halo. Halo doesn't have it. So we're going to go ahead and use Halo. So I'm, not, I'm not taking a chance personally if I'm breathing it into my lungs. I just want to make sure um, that I'm doing everything I can to vape safely, whether it's uh, confirmed or not. It's all your your option. All right, so you saw how easy it is just to pop the head in there, the new uh, atomizer. By the way, the atomizer is the 510 um, screw thread over there. <laughs> it actually, see? So you're getting a new 510 uh, thread socket thingy every time you put in a new atomizer, so that's kind of nice. And you just sort of close that up. Whoops, screw that closed. Screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it. And you know what? <laughs> I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. I forgot. I just said that I want to uh, pre-wet my, my uh, atomizer here real quick. So if you put a new one in, it's a good idea to uh, just sort of prime your head just a little bit so you'll, you don't have to wait as long to start vaping. I'm going to make a, a little bit of a mess. Whoa, you can smell that peppermint. Big time. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this in here. Really simple. This is going to be a long video, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Alright, so very easy. I don't have a tissue. Alright, so there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is fill this up. So again, the way that you fill it is you just simply turn the top part of the tank until you see those holes open up, just like that. And then you just get your juice and you just pour it down those holes. I'm doing this kind of fast behind the camera, so I am going to make a big giant mess. I'm not being careful, so I'm getting it all over the place, but I'm sure... All of y'all. So I should be able to get how much in here? 
cap 3.5 milliliters. I'm going to leave it at that. And then we'll go ahead and close this up. Wow. That was easy. Okay, I cleaned up my mess just a little bit. So I have my device here. Um, by the way, the screen, you can flip it. I believe that you can flip it by just holding the two buttons in. Yep, see how it flipped? But I like it the other way, so just hold the, the scroll buttons again for about five, six seconds, and then it, it flips the screen around if you want to flip it around. Alright, so we'll go ahead. You know what? Um, right here you have a spring-loaded 510. You have a couple of neat air holes right there. By the, all the protections and safety features are built into this thing, so you have overheat, overcharge protection. This fires coils down 2.1 ohms and up to 3.5 ohms. So you, you have a, a very good range. You have battery venting right here. So if there is an issue with the built-in battery that's not removable, it can vent. For those of you who are interested in what venting is, is what happens is that the battery, um, if something were to happen where, let's say, the protections failed or it had a, a, a battery that was faulty or whatever, um, it's a lot of energy. And what will happen is, like, if the battery short somehow, and uh, what will happen is it will just um, start swelling up and re start releasing gases and it can eventually even explode. Now you don't want to build up pressure so it's like a pressure cooker and explode so you want that that gas that it's giving off to, to vent out so it doesn't build up pressure in the device and blow up, you know, it create an explosion. Um, it's the simplest way I could put it. <laughs> Alright, so that was easy to pop on there. I had the airflow all the way open, so we're going to do some mouth to lung hits, or, or some just straight up lung hits. But if you're doing mouth to lung, you're probably going to have to close this really, really tight, from what I understand. And we'll go ahead and try that out. So, we're going to um, crank this up to, let me see, they recommend it on the box between 30 and 70 watts. So, I think I'm going to go to 60 Okay, so again, you got to press and hold it until it blinks, and then it should start moving. If I hold the button down, it'll race really fast. If I just click it, it will go 0.5 watt at a time. So there's a variable voltage type of device here. or I'm sorry, variable wattage. I think you could change it to variable voltage. If you press the fire and one of these buttons. Ah, there we go. So you press the fire button with the minus scroll button. It turns it to a variable voltage device as you can see right there and with variable voltage it goes from 2 to 7.5 volts but we're going to go back to variable wattage mode so you hit the fire button along with the plus scroll button and you hold it for a couple of seconds and now you're back in variable wattage mode so I want to go to 60 watts and you can see here that it's a 0.59 ohm coils what's being read so if I were to fire this, it's showing 5.74 volts there. I'll let you take a look at that real close up. You can see how it turns green around there, so we know our battery's doing really good. If it gets yellow, you're starting to get low, and it's red, it's time to charge. Alright, so let's go ahead and try this out. So I was trying to think what this might have replaced as far as some of the stuff in my collection. Like I have a uh, iTaste MVP3, so this would be like a, a good replacement for that. Sort of in the same category where your your boo is starting to move out of the the ego uh, style and um, trying to work your way up to box mods, and this is sort of like the next step. Um, here it is in relation to the MVP3, just as far as size is concerned and width is concerned. So you can see it's actually it's not as high as the old MVP 3.0 but it's almost as wide however it's kind of more ergonomic you know you have a rounded area here and then it slims down a little bit and it feels really good in your hand. It feels really comfortable and I really like the texture again that brushed metal texture that's on here. I like the little um, nameplate right there button. Here, here's a pet peeve. I hate when buttons rattle and move around. Does it. Nice tactile sound. 
Another pet peeve of mine is if it does a little clicky, I want it to be firing. I don't want it to clicky and then I gotta continue pressing down and it has to bottom out to fire. So it's working like a normal button. The uh, scroll buttons do have a little bit of rattle, but they're it's not bad. You don't he I hear nothing when I'm shaking it, which is good. And the buttons do feel good, so I, I like the buttons. I like the OLED screen. It's very bright, clear. Everything I need, very obvious, very clear. Okay. Now, finally, how long has it been and I haven't taken one vape? That's pretty bad. Let's uh, see. Um... That's Peppermint. <laughs> I might not be able to do a full lung hit on this. Wow. Now this this juice does not have nicotine in it. This particular one that I have not sent me because I didn't know what I was going to be putting it in. Because you you know you don't want to put a high nicotine thing into something that that vapes um, that that consumes a lot of juice because that could be dangerous. So if you get like high nicotine, you want something that will sip the juice because you don't want to intake an enormous amount of nicotine that could be b bad um, so I just told him semi zero and um, uh, it's still that peppermint is so strong <laughs> the flavor is so intense that I don't know if I can do a full lung that is crazy good. The, I mean, the flavor is absolutely incredible, and the vapor production. My nose is clear. Both nostrils. That's rare for me. Wow. <laughs> I just found a good way to clear my nose better than Afrin. Hello, where are you? Vapor production is out of this world. Now, I'm going to be increasing flavor by doing a mouth to lung hit. I'm going to close the airflow down to almost closed. Look at that. Even more. I want it to feel like a cigarette. There we go. So this thing is barely open. Just a little hair open. And the flavor is even more intense. You don't get all that vapor, but the flavor is crazy. Crazy. So this this setup, <laughs> I mean, it, it's hard to imagine um, something this simple, relatively, as far as the device is concerned, at least, is producing um, a really solid hit. I want you to hear what it sounds like. I don't really hear much of a rattle. I don't have all the fancy devices to look at the waveform that this thing is putting out. Um, there are other channels for that. You know who they are. You know, <coughs> I wanted to try to stop maybe so I could talk. Pseudo. Pseudo. You know him. This peppermint is way, way, way intense. All right, so I like this. By the way, um, while you're vaping, it counts seconds. That's a, a worthless feature as far as I'm concerned. Um, let's see how long it takes to cut off. I'm going to let this go. Where are we? 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 seconds it cut off. That's what it does when it's held for 15 seconds. So that's your cut off. Woo! And this sucker is hot. Okay. So. Do I recommend it? 
yes, I absolutely recommend it. Um, I don't, I can't find anything wrong with this device. I really cannot find anything wrong with this device. I uh, highly recommend the Cool Fire 4 Plus, and you can get them in the kit, um, either with the um, iSub tank. What do they call it? The uh, the sub, yeah, the iSub G tank or the Apex tank. If you really need the capacity, um, get the the iSub G. If you um, want the easy fill feature and the airflow on the top, then get the Apex. You know. It's your choice. And you can get whatever coils you want. All these coils that I showed you uh, fit in both tanks. So you have a choice. Alright, so I do highly recommend the Cool Fire 4 Plus if you are sort of a moderate vapor, sort of in between a starter and a pro. Wow, this thing is hot. <laughs> I'm going to put it down. Um, it's a good thing it cuts off and it has all those protections in it. But um, this might be what you're looking for. And uh, I went ahead and put some links to my Vapor Store and to Vapor DNA. I also put a link for Halo. They've been making juice for a long, long time. And they're one of the safest juices you could buy in the market today. And I know safety is on everybody's mind with all these things coming out about the, uh, the um, I, can, I can't remember that word, diacetyl um, stuff, whether... It's something to be concerned about or not it is something that I am not going to debate. I know it's a hot button topic, but um, me personally, I'm going to play it safe and just uh, vape juices that are known not to have diacetyl. Problem solved for me <laughs> in my own mind. All right, well, thank you very, very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and especially you. And I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.